This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. To bingo, we're back. I told you we'd come back. We came back. We had a really interesting show with uh, a, a student in a university uh, in, a, in a town in the northern part of India. Oh, wow. that show, that was great. And we also played a, a show that we took uh, at the Energy Policy Forum meeting on Monday. It was uh, sort of a group of the uh, working, working, uh, working group uh, chairs there. Uh, namely, um, let's see if I can remember, Mina Morita was one. Uh, she's a former chair of the PUC. Yes. Mm -hmm. And John Cole, another former right. PUC. And Lance Tanaka from PAR Hawaii. And, and Maria uh, Tomei. And they were, they were our guests on the show, which we actually streamed live on Monday. So uh, today's been an active afternoon, wow. And now <laughs> you, Becca. <laughs> so we're having a show today about, about efficiency, but we always like to include something about what's going on at, at Hawaiian Electric Companies. And uh, Becca is the uh, manager of renewable acquisition uh, ag agreements in uh, Hawaiian Electric Company. Did I get that right? Renewable, renewable acquisition department. Department. Yes. Okay, got it. Well, I like to Close have enough. your job. I like to have your job. <laughs> very important job. It is a very so important job. So in July, the PUC approved the PSIP plan. That was a good thing because yes. it took a long time to, for them to do that. And then, then now you have to implement the plan. And you, you sent out a press release a day or two ago, which uh, I was really interested in. And I, and I certainly would like to talk to you about that, where you're going to implement uh, the PSIP. You're going to start implementing it with 400 megawatts. Ooh, exciting. Tell us what's going on. Sure. So um, as you said, on Monday, we filed a press release to announce that um, on Monday, we filed with the commission request for proposals to procure um, approximately 400 megawatts of generation on um, Oahu, Maui, and also um, Hawaii Island. And so that's broken down into 220 megawatts of renewable generation on Oahu, variable, um, 100 megawatts on Maui, which includes 40 megawatts of firm generation, and then um, approximately 50 megawatts on Hawaii Island. Very exciting. That's Very a, exciting. That's a lot of megawatts. You know, I mean, what is, I, I'm not sure about this, but there are 1,200 mega, megawatts out there that in, in, say, Oahu, or is it statewide? I don't remember. Uh, and this is a substantial part of what's already out there, yeah. Yes, it will be. It is the largest single um, acquisition of renewable assets in the state. So it, it's a big undertaking for the yeah. company. This is going to take us a long way to 100% uh, uh, renewables if we get this much going. Yeah. Definitely, yes. Yeah. So how long in general, you know, the process is going to involve the, uh, the approval of the RF. You're going to submit an RFP, RF, R, RFP, RFP form soliciting proposals, and then you're going to have to get the proposals, and then you're going to have to cut contra negotiate contracts, and then you're going to have to get that approved, and then you're going to have to go back and ask the people who were successful, um, you know, to do the job, and you're going to have to make purchase power agreements, and it's going to take a while. How long is it going to take to get the work done? So we're estimating um, a little over. Um, two years to get through the RFP process and the contracting and PUC approval. So um, we're targeting to have projects through PUC approval by the end of um, 2019, or third quarter 2019 approximately. So what we did on Monday is we actually did file draft requests for proposals um, for the Maui firm generation, and then also we filed the draft of the uh, variable uh, request for proposal, and that was based on the um, on Oahu, but um, the Maui and Hawaii Island would be very similar. Because the process requires going through stakeholder comments and making modifications, the thought was just to file one draft, we can make modifications and then um, yeah. duplicate and make... Use it as a template. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, hopefully that will speed the process. Um, so the next steps, um, the commission in their order uh, opening the docket on, they had uh, issued an order on October 6th of this month, they... Um, gave stakeholders 20 days from Monday to provide comments. We um, also proposed to the commission in our filing on Monday some additional steps. So we'll wait to see if um, they approve those, but they include holding a technical conference, um, as well as um, it, it, some additional steps after the 20 days, just so that we could um, give stakeholders and ourselves an idea of where the process was going. Um, but for now, the only set date is the 20 days for stakeholder yeah. input. 
But typically, in the under the Compid framework, we would file the drafts. Um, we'd seek um, input from stakeholders as well as the commission, and then we would file revised drafts based on that input uh, for commission approval. Mm -hmm. Very transparent process, I must say. It is very transparent. And actually, we are trying to make um, the process even more transparent this time. So as part of our filing on Monday, uh, we filed kind of the process of how we came up with the draft RFPs, some of the trade-offs that we had to make in order to meet our 2019 deadline, um, and also procure the generation that we are anticipating. Um, but And our goal is you know, to also seek that um, stakeholder input so that we can make the process even more um, transparent so that everybody has an understanding of what the utility needs and what we're looking for and everybody can be on an equal footing in the in the process and then in the end result hopefully procure the cheapest generation possible yeah. for our customers yeah. Oh, yeah yeah and you're gonna ride this all the way through this is gonna be a project yes major, <laughs> major it's the biggest project yet in terms of renewables yeah in one definitely in, project, in one yeah. one project so yeah. We're actually proposing a stage uh, process so that we can make sure that we get the generation on in phases and not wait um, kind of for a, an end date, you know, speed the process we think by implementing in stages. So we're proposing a, a of the um, almost approximately 400 megawatts, we would take a, a smaller set of projects to reach um, PUC approval by 2019. And then in 2019, do a second round of solicitation for projects um, and then uh, procure the rest of the generation in mm -hmm. that um, uh, 400 megawatts. So it'll all be built out in the early 20s sometime? Yes, yeah, so we're proposing that projects uh, breach commercial operations uh, no later than the end of 2022. Mm -hmm. Okay, we should all stay well and healthy and see this realized, yeah? Yes, definitely. But uh, the, one, the one piece of news that I think uh, we, we should leave with people is that this is different. Um, in terms of the purchase power agreements, it's, it's not the same as it was because this is based on dispatchable rather than must take. Can you explain that to our audience? Sure, I'd be happy to. So um, with the filing on Monday, and by the way, this is all available on our website, mm -hmm. um, the, the draft documents, we did file a new draft model PPA for variable generation that's uh, dispatchable generation. So um, it gives the company complete dispatch rights over the power, which will allow us to balance what is needed on the grid and um, use the energy the, in the most efficient way for the grid and also for ancillary ancillary services. And in exchange, we'll be paying the um, developers a fixed payment, which um, will help with them on their financing side and should make the, the projects uh, more financeable because they have a guaranteed income stream as long as the facility is available. Yeah, um, so that, that really works well. That sounds like a very modern approach to things. Yes. It's, it's where we need to go, I think. Mm -hmm. Dispatchable is what the utility needs. And dispatchable means, correct me if I'm off base on this, but dispatchable means if you want it, you can have it. You can take it. You flip a switch and you get the power you want. As opposed before, uh, under must take, is that you had to take the power and you couldn't actually control uh, when it was being dispatched or not being dispatched. Correct. If, if the sun was shining, then yeah. other, under limited circumstances, we may be able to have been able to curtail the energy, but in general, we would be required to take it. And then, as you said, under this, it would be more that we'd be pulling the energy when we need it. Yeah, yeah. So that's this is a good concept. Uh, and and I, I take it from what you say that we, when we're talking about this 400, we're talking about solar and wind. Anything else? Uh, solar and wind are examples, but we're open to um, any proposal. Oh, it could be something else, yes, too. Yes, um, that, uh, you know, we're see what the developers have. And we also have... Um, allowed for storage proposals to be resource plus storage. So um, that's another option that we're going to be evaluating under the... This is very exciting. Feel yes. like, it feels like we're moving forward, you know, we're implementing the PSIP. Is it, these are exciting times. Definitely. We're very excited. Um, we think that this will be um, great for the state of Hawaii um, and for our customers. Oh, um, so we're, we, we are really looking forward to moving forward with the process. Yeah, great. Um, uh, Rebecca Matsushima, uh, but she goes by Becca, and if there were three of her, they'd call her Tribecca. <laughs> oh, I'm only kidding. <laughs> thank you, Becca. Thank you for coming down. Thank you have you. to come back and tell us how it's going later. Definitely. Okay. Thank you. Aloha. We're going to take a short break. You'll see. We'll be right back. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Living in this crazy world, so caught up in the confusion. Nothing is making sense for me and you. Maybe we can find a way. There's got to be solutions. 
to make a brighter day. What do we do? We've got to give a little love, have a little hope, make this world a little better. Make it a better Try a little more, harder than before. You may say. Okay, we're back. We're live. You had a very refreshing break. And guess what? The table is reconstituted. <laughs> yeah. My auntie at the far side, Sharon Moriwaki, the co-chair of the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, put on a brilliant annual summit on Monday. It was That's really right. fabulous. That's great. Yeah, thank yeah. you for that, Sharon. Okay, we have two special guests from Hawaii Energy. Uh, Tony Kawal uh, from Hawaii Energy. He's program manager of the program called Hard to Reach Hard Communities Program. We call it that, yeah. Yes. Okay. And the program supervisor is Bob Dahilig. Oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> and uh, also involved in the program, these guys are with Honeywell, but they're with Hawaii Energy for this program. That is correct. And we are talking about trying to reach communities that are hard to reach. And let me say that this is consistent with something that we here at ThinkTech talk about all the time, and that is bringing the state together, even playing field, everybody involved, nobody left out. And that's what you guys are doing. Who? Who's going to describe the program for me, Bob? Well, what it, it must be you. Well, one of the one of the programs that we have uh, primarily for uh, is for a multifamily um, direct install, which we call Energy Smart for Homes, and this is a program where we actually go in and we uh, we retrofit each individual residential unit uh, in a multifamily property, and uh, with a very simple energy measures, we go ahead and try and um, directly install, replace, and save the residents. You know their energy or monthly on your, uh, save on their monthly utilities and uh, overall save the uh, property management some operating costs also so, so it's a win win like condos are you talking about condos or apartment buildings or high, like any size well we we've done properties for anywhere from 10 to over 500 but uh, uh, really our uh, target audience that we would really like to serve is um, those again those hard to reach which would be like maybe senior communities um, mm -hmm. Uh, low-income communities, uh, government-subsidized properties, those types of things we want to go ahead and reach out to because they're largely an underserved uh, portion of our sector. And how do you reach out to them? I mean, like, do they call in or you go out and beat the bushes and say, where are the seniors today? <laughs> well, first, first of all, I want to say that our Energy Smart for Homes program is uh, completely free. We, all the materials mm. and labor are provided free. And you would think that uh, a free program, people will be flocking to That's it. That's right, yeah. But actually, uh, it's, it's a little bit tougher than, than folks realize. So we do have uh, on staff uh, uh, an account manager who actually goes out and uh, tries to sign up folks for the program, explaining them, um, trying to make sure that everything that uh, we can provide for them is beneficial for that particular property. So does the whole building have to be enrolled or can, like, individual units come in or it doesn't seem to make sense unless you have everybody yeah we, we we prefer to have everybody but we realize there's not going to be a hundred percent all the time uh if, so, uh if any particular uh, unit or resident wants to opt out they always can and in fact even on the e energy measures that we provide if they don't want any one particular one of the measures they can opt out of that also so if somebody's watching this show and they want the program to come to them and their community how do they do that call you up yeah, absolutely. They, they could either call us up at 537-5577 or even um, get on, online on the web at hawaiienergy.com. Hawaii yeah, very cool. Okay, <clears throat> you got some uh, videos we think we should look at. Well, I just wanted to quickly show uh, some program offerings. So in uh, the first slide, slide 1B, uh, we have some uh, offerings that uh, I can go ahead and identify for you. And uh, as you can see there, uh, we target, and it's called Energy Smart Four Homes. The four homes being um, the four in the homes being four uh, energy measures that we focus on: um, Energy Star uh, lamps, LEDs. Uh, also, secondly, we'll have high-efficiency faucet aerators for both your kitchen and your bath, um, and high-efficiency shower heads. In uh, numbers two and three that you see there, we've come to find out that about 48% of your hot water use, which again, if it's electric water heating, is is a, a major portion of your electric bill, about 40%, mm. um, you could reduce much of it by having these high efficiency uh, uh, water measures. So it doesn't just conserve 
water, but it actually saves energy on your electric water heater. And on number four, these smart power strips, are, uh, they're also called advanced power strips. Those are energy manage uh, management devices that goes, go ahead and um, turns off your appliances that aren't being used, uh, mm -hmm. depending on the demand. Does it do it automatically? It does it automatically. Oh. So in, in, the, in our old school days, remember we used to unplug yeah, stuff when we left the house? Yeah. That, that would eliminate wow. that, that issue. Great. Yeah. And so, yeah, well, with, with those things combined, we found that uh, those, those four simple measures uh, can impact a uh, particular unit about $160 a year. That may not seem like much, but you multiply it times the number Over of units time. per year, oh, yeah. it uh, turns out to be quite, quite a savings for mm -hmm. everybody. Yeah. Tony, how do we reach out and, and contact people? I mean, in, in remote areas, uh, I, Bob alluded to the fact that sometimes it's hard to do that. They, they don't know, don't care, whatever it is. How do you reach them? So we do have an account manager that will go out to neighborhoods. Sometimes he'll canvas the neighborhood. Sometimes he'll go and, and almost cold call. He, he does have a list of property managers, building owners that he does reach out to. And we, we find that you know, the, the hard to reach communities, the hard to reach actually extends toward the property managers and the building mm -hmm. owners themselves. Uh, so it's, it's getting them involved and getting them to buy into the program. Uh, this is a no cost or free service that we do provide. And people are very skeptical. People, whenever you hear that, they think it's a, it's a scam. Um, but uh, we, once we get our foot in the door, then we're able to convince them, and convince them that, no, this is a viable program that we have uh, through Hawaiian Energy. So it, it can be difficult sometimes to break down those barriers. Uh, but um, we have a very, very good team that can help to convince them otherwise. Suppose you have a property owner, landlord, if you yeah. will, who doesn't know, doesn't care, doesn't want, you know, just leave me alone kind of thing. Right. But you have tenants, his tenants, yeah. uh, in that property who are interested and would be good customers for you. How do you, how do you deal with that scenario? Yeah. Well, uh, you know, the, um, again, the account manager plays a very good, very big role in that. And he's um, been quite successful in being able to go ahead and, on behalf of the residents, go ahead and talk to the mm. uh, resident manager or the property manager or even the ownership and um, explain the benefits, the overall benefits, not just in terms of savings, but in terms of energy, in terms of reducing carbon footprint. So uh, he's uh, done a very effective job in that case. So it's, 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 it's social engineering. I mean, you gotta, sure. you gotta be nice to people, you gotta find the cultural connection and all that. But what's, you know, from the point of view of Hawaii Energy, what, right. what are your aspirations? What are your goals? What are your deliverables, so to speak? And, and how do you measure the success of this program? In, in wattage, in what? Yeah, in, in kilowatt hours and units. So we, we definitely have a metric that we go after and how many units, which, which are the tenant residences themselves, mm -hmm. how many units that we, we go after in a, in, a, in a particular year. And so we, we have uh, various, um, various sectors, various communities that we go to, various uh, agencies. So we focus in Hawaii Energy, of course, on the hard to reach. And then we also have a partner, uh, Pono Home, that uh, mm -hmm. helps us oh. out with this. And they, they go directly to HPHA properties, uh, as well as DHHL mm -hmm. in, in certain mm -hmm. cases. So, uh, this is, so this is largely for people who, not only remote, but are, who are economically disadvantaged, Definitely. Maybe Native Hawaiian communities sure. yeah, absolutely. Who, who wouldn't necessarily be online for this kind of technology. That's right. And um, so you're going to deliver to them. You have a period of time in which you have to, in which the program will last. I mean, is it, is it a defined period, say a year, two years, three years? Is that the way it works? Or is it indefinite? Well, we go from uh, program year to program year. Um, program so, year program, yeah, so yes. we're, we're, we're funded through um, from June through July of the following year. Mm -hmm. So um, we always tell folks that uh, you know, the, the program is funded, but uh, it'll, it may last until July or until f fund lasts. So, and that may motivate them to come in out of the cold within that period of time. Yeah, hopefully, yeah, they'll, they'll realize that there is a little bit of urgency to it and uh, want to participate sooner rather than later. But that, that doesn't mean that it actually closes at the end of the year because you may very well renew it it may very well be renewed for year after year for a while, particularly if it's reaching communities <clears throat> that need to be reached. No? Absolutely. Sure. This program uh, um, was instituted back in um, March of 2015. We did our first units then. And it, it's, uh, it's been continuing up until this program year. So, yeah, that is that opportunity of, of continuing after the, this program year. So tell on the us, flip tell side. Tell us what, what, what you actually do. I mean, you go yeah. in and you change the light bulbs or you put the strips in or what? That's what a wonderful you... question, Sharon. Let me, let me go ahead and show you the next slide oh, here. Okay. 
um, on one seat. <laughs> Couldn't this was for, not rehearsed. Couldn't ask for a better segue <laughs> myself here. Uh, uh, th these are, this just gives you an indication of the, the, the areas on uh, just Oahu that uh, we've, we've touched. Uh, we've recently started, uh, again, through Pono Home uh, in reaching some of the neighbor islands. But in, um, in terms of there, like I said, March 2015, uh, we've done about mm. over 12,500 units just here wow. on Oahu. That's uh, quite, that's quite, quite, units. quite yeah. a bit, yeah. And uh, as you can see on that, that very last uh, uh, row there, the customer annual savings mm -hmm. is over $700,000. Wow, yeah. that's great. And that's money that accrues to them, exactly. the customers. That's right. they, they don't have to pay that yeah. much for, to the utility for electrical generation. Absolutely. Yeah. Pretty good. Wow. Yeah, so again, to continue on to answer your question, Sharon, the next, the next slide. <clears throat> ah. That's, uh, that, that's our uh, installer mm. there, uh, Jim, mm -hmm. and he, uh, that's what you see there. He go actually goes into each individual unit. Um, we'll replace the light bulbs, as you can see in the top left, uh, the shower heads, and on the bottom right, he's replacing the, the, the kitchen aerator and the uh, other light bulbs, like uh, above the hood over the stove. Uh, again, we focus on these particular things because we realize that there's a lot more energy savings that could be reaped from these particular uh, items. And so does he like go in and do an audit first and then come back with all the light bulbs or whatever, um, or how does that work? Again, our, our, our account manager goes in and does a site, what we call a site survey prior to uh, actually the installer going in. Um, he will go ahead and make an evaluation of what actually might need to be done so that we can make sure that our installer mm -hmm. brings enough of the, uh, the products on site at the time of installation. Mm -hmm. Do you get a special price on these products where you go out and buy them in order to install them? Absolutely, because we, uh, negotiate. Because we buy it in volume. Yeah. Uh, we do so many units. Yeah, 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 we get yeah, a better yeah. deal on them. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it strikes me there's two sides to this. One is the side of you're saving people cash money of $770,000. That's, that's a great gift to them. That's you know, disposable income that they're not spending, and therefore they can use that money on other things that may be more important to them, like food. <laughs> right. Or rent. In Absolutely. Future. Plus, we get all of these items for free, right? Yeah, right. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's an enhancement of their life, lifestyle in general. But the other part is what I'm going to ask you about. The other part is the benefit to the community in general, to sure. the state. Because, am I right? We're, we're using less electrical energy uh, this way, and that benefits all. Can you talk about that? Really? Sure. Well, the, we always preach with the, in Hawaii Energy, of course, is energy for energy efficiency first, and then and then bring on the renewables, right? So we want uh, Hawaii obviously to be energy efficiency uh, uh, first and focused. And some of the ways that we we get there too is we we go out to the community and we do workshops. Um, so we do community workshops, energy literacy workshops, and I'd like to pull up a. A video that we always start out with in a lot of our workshops, it is uh, video three, The Small Kind Ridiculous. You could pull that up, please. It's a very, <laughs> very short, but it, it's, it's a very nice video, uh, and it really just uh, hones in on the message. It's obvious that waste is ridiculous. Why don't we think the same about wasting energy? Find out how you can be smarter with your energy at smallkindridiculous.org. A nice, it's a kind of a funny way to say you wouldn't do all these things in your normal life. You wouldn't uh, roll your spam as <laughs> musubi with 30 yards of, of saran wrap. Yeah. But yet, when you leave uh, to go on a date somewhere, you, and it's at night, you leave all the lights on in your house. Yeah. So why do you do that? So we, we start off with these, uh, kind of unique, quirky ways of engaging the audience. And so we have uh, a number of different uh, facilitators instruct and, and instructors that go out into the communities 
uh, and, and teach you know, simple tips and tricks and really engage and connect with them. So they, they are all very locally uh, networked and connected to the communities that, that we serve. And they all have different styles. Uh, so uh, we, we've got a couple. We've got uh, the Blue Planet Foundation that helps us with this. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, they've what, been doing this a long time. Yes, yeah. and, and they really focus too on the the uh, student energy education. Mm. So they're equipping the the students, the the future leaders uh, for uh, energy smart. efficiency. So then they take Leverage. it home to their families, yeah, right? Yeah, they yeah, teach yeah. the parents. Use the kids yeah. to teach their parents. Yeah. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And then we've got uh, uh, Helen Y, who's oh, been a, a, right. a fixture oh, sure. she of, won of the an program. Award. She did two years ago. She yeah. won an award with the Hawaii Energy Policy she, Forum. She is absolutely her. great. Uh, she's great at really connecting with the community um, and and having them laugh and then and ask uh, good questions about energy efficiency. And then we have a, a new um, person, Kaylee E. Wilson, who who does a uh, a workshop. Uh, making you as an energy energy entrepreneur, and if you could uh, just pull up uh, slide four, um, just kind of uh, highlights what she does. Uh, so she she's a a younger woman who who teaches teaches basically based on a top ten tips, and so these are top ten habits uh, as an energy entrepreneur. So you're, she she brings the audience in and tells them that hey, you guys are entrepreneurs. Instead of saving money, you're putting money in your pocket. So you're, you're actually making money. Mm -hmm. And then she, she equates that to fun things like all this money that you saved at the home when you did these uh, tips, you can you know, save for uh, a trip to Vegas or maybe <laughs> a monthly cell phone bill or a Zippy surf pack or something like that. So kind of really relate to the audience. Mm -hmm. well. This is all about engagement, you know, and right. you guys are effectively designing an educational program yes. in order to get your foot in the door. And, that, and the movie really teaches us a lot about your teaching. You made lot, it very it interesting. Like not mindful about what you do, and so this is kind of awareness of what we do and then changing behaviors really. Yes, it's all, it's all about changing, changing yeah, slowly changing yeah. behaviors and nudging people because to energy efficiency. Here's the bottom line of it. It's not just that you fix this unit and, and put energy saving devices, you're right. actually changing the way people see the thing right. and way they conduct themselves, not only in this unit, but in every unit right. they live in for the rest of their lives. Yes, lifestyle mm. and behavior mm. modification. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So it goes way beyond just just the fact of going in and fixing the unit. Yeah, it's a shift, it's a, it's a, a, a continual shift in a behavior so it yeah. makes it part of who they are yeah. to be energy it must be conscious. great to watch to, to see this mm. it is it's going it to be is. successful it's, yeah. it's very rewarding both both the energy smart for homes programs as well as our workshops when people see it and they they get that proverbial you know light bulb that goes off yeah uh, mm. they it, it is really enjoyable to see that and rewarding yeah. All right, Sharon, out of time. This happens all the time, Sharon. So it's your time to make a, a little summary of what we've learned right. here today. And I, what I, I really think that this program of um, looking at changing people's behaviors and then going to hard to reach communities where a lot of times they don't think about those kinds of things. And I really think that both Tony and Bob are doing a great job. If it's going on for two years and continuing, that uh, we hope that you can expand and tell us more about new programs that you in, put in place to, to train people or in terms of what what is and, and what they can do to put money in their pocket. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for having us. Thank, thank you, you for gentlemen. Coming. Tony Kowal, uh, program manager, and Bob Dahilig, uh, program supervisor at Hawaii Energy, with this great new, I shouldn't say new program, with this great program great you're doing continuing to reach program. into remote communities. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Aloha. Aloha.